everyone, welcome to March's Q&A video with uh, me, Ne, and Mishka, also Hi. known as Sarah. Um, so, how are you doing this morning, Mishka? I'm doing very well. You? Good. Yes, yeah, we, um, we're having some troubled nights with the little one, yeah. as I'm sure all parents are, are feeling me right now, but um, we've oh, got why? some teething and stuff. <laughs> Last night, Silver made so much noise. So I was having trouble with my little quiet. one. Yeah, he's so quiet <laughs> normally, but he was banging about. Like, I was like, babe, what are you doing? <laughs> he's um he's running about on the floor a little bit. So um if I suddenly yelp, um it's because his little tickly whiskers have brushed against my feet, so nothing major. <laughs> um so Mishka, are you excited for the upcoming demo release in the spring? Yes. Everyone seemed to really like the sneak peeks that I we am. gave on social media. I worked so hard on like the chapter five variations and things. Chapter six, I really, really like as well. And I think there's some moments in it that's going to be a bit like unexpected. And I, I've put it on the updates as well that there's um there's some mirroring going on mm. between book one and book three, which I really wanted at yeah. this point because we've you know come that far. And I wanted there to be definite like, oh, look, it, it's sort of like, look how the love interests are handling now. And look how your main character can suddenly maybe change since book yeah. one how they're handling the things now and things that, and I'm really excited to see how people sort of play their characters yeah. and things like this and react to the way the love interests are now and things like this but obviously chapter five there's some bits in it that I've really looked forward I've, to I've been play testing it and it's brilliant it I, is fantastic yeah, I'm really looking forward love to it, it. Um, so, shall we just get straight on with some questions? Because I think you've got quite a few this month. Oh, yeah. um, so, first one um, from Anonymous has asked, um, Hi, I was wondering if we're going to meet Rook's unit. And if not, if it's not too much of a spoiler, could you tell us a bit about them? Maybe some descriptions. Uh, Rook didn't actually have a unit. Oh. Yeah. It it's, was a it's young a, wolf. Yeah, it's <laughs> unusual for human liaisons to have units. Mm. Um, it's a special case for the main character mm. now because obviously with their blood and things like that, they've got to have a bit more protection and things like mm. that. Um, but there are um, sometimes um, like units assigned to towns. Yeah. Um, and they'll have more of a closer relationship with the human liaison. Mm. But in Rook's time, there wasn't actually a team like a unit assigned yeah. to Wayhaven. So he didn't actually have a unit. He, he just worked on his own. With, yeah, he just kind of went to the facility and hung out with anybody. And, you know, generally everybody got on with him because he was pretty yeah. easygoing and things. So mm, well, there we go. A bit more backstory. Um, so next one um, from Anonymous has asked, I'm pretty sure this might have been asked before, uh, but what is the agency protocol if any of their human agents want to become a vampire or any other kind of supernatural? Is there like a form to fill out or something, or do they give like pamphlets or hold workshops? Um, it's it's pretty a simple process, really. I mean, it's that mm. they've got it down to an art at this point. Mm. But the thing is, it's not an uncommon thing. And the agency, as long as a human is aware of, you know, all of the yeah and the pros sort of, and cons, yeah, and, and the, the pros rule, and cons list, sort of, yeah, <laughs> the sort of rules that come into it after as well, because it's a bit more strict when you're yeah. natural interacting with humans. You can't do it as much and things. As long as a human is aware well, it's their choice so yeah you know, if they want to as long as it's you know consensual and things then why not you know that's up to them but there are sort of like paperwork to fill out and things and they will have like uh like not like psychologist mm. meetings but that sort counseling. of thing yeah counseling exactly yeah. um just to prepare them for what it could be and mm. things like that and they'll have it afterwards as well obviously to sell yeah. them and things like this it's a pretty simple process really a bit of like a pretty top-notch employer to be perfectly yeah honest. <laughs> I, I wanted to make them that way they're supposed to be a bit like they're supposed to be trying yeah you know they're not perfect yeah um, well maybe he is no but i mean Probably like, me. like nah. well yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like with caging and things like that they're not perfect but i want it it's that they're always like bad the agency yeah. people aren't they and i thought it'd be really nice to have a one that sort of like is actually trying yeah you know they're actually trying to do their best they may not be perfect they're not getting it right all the time but they are at least they're trying they're giving it a go and they, yeah. they want to make their employees happy and things like this you know it's a fantasy world so <laughs> <laughs> like it um, cool. Okay, so uh, the next one, um, Anonymous has said, so I understand the romantic roots, uh, but not so much the friendship ones. Can you give some insight as to how the BFF thing will be different from the romantic roots and the normal friend ones? Besides the whole feeling thing, I'm more curious as to how these sorts of things will come into play in game. Um, yeah, so... So obviously the romantic roots will be the main theme of the game. Yeah. It's, it's a romance game. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, we're all here to romance 
some lovely vampires. Yes. <laughs> but I do like the friendship thing as well. Yeah. So the B- BFF route will be locked in book three. I'm mm-hmm. undecided yet whether it'll be a choice or if it'll be locked by the By amount of points you stats, get, how many scenes yeah. you've had with a certain vampire and things like this. And what it'll be is um, in-game, you know, like it gets to a point and then the scene splits off and you go and see your love interest. So yeah. like, you'll have a scene with Nate if you're in Nate's route or Nate Nat and then, um, or like Adam Ava if you're on Adam Ava's route and things. Yeah. Uh, well, it'll do that. You'll have, there'll be not just like love interest scene splits. Yeah. There'll be like BFF scene split. Oh, that's splits. nice. Um, you know, because I love creating work for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but that's well, what makes it amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I want it to feel really like in depth, you know, yeah. to feel like it, you're making an impact, not just romantically, but yeah. on the characters around you kind of thing. And again, it just adds a bit of a difference when you're playing through it, you know? Um, so it'll be like maybe you've had a major moment with sort of like Eve a, a Adam, Eve a mm-hmm. Adam, and yeah, there's like fallout from it. Mm-hmm. So you go back to your room, but your BFF's waiting for you. Yeah. And it, that that scene, that comfort yeah. scene, will depend on who you get. Yeah. So Nate Nat will act differently than Felix Farah or Mason Morgan, you know? Um, so it's, yeah, like another whole load of variations. Yes, <laughs> every single room. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be things like that. And also things like maybe there's a, there's a point where you need to make a decision. The team mm. make, need to make a decision. And of course, maybe, maybe like Nate Nat might side with you. Yeah, rather than Adam Ava, if you, they're your BFF, because obviously they're still BFFs with Adam Ava, but they might be more willing to go against Adam yeah. and Ava if they've got a bit of support from their BFF yeah. as well and things like this. So, mm. so some good stuff to come. So, uh, next one is um, so uh, not spam sixty nine has asked. Um, Hi, Mishka and Nick. Um, first, thank you so much for Way Haven. These books are such a wonderful respite for when life gets chaotic. Oh, I'm glad it can. They be certainly a nice are. It's yeah. nice to lose yourself in a lovely. That's what I do. Book. That's what. That's why I like writing it because mm. it's exactly my sort of way of getting that's away what from wanted. the world as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you've been planning these books for over a decade. Um, since you started writing, have you surprised yourself with any big changes to the plot or characters? Has anything that big had to be cut or reworked once you started writing the current version of Wheatley? Then, thank you. Um, it did change quite a bit because writing a normal like novel series and changing it into interactive fiction that's quite a big yeah that's quite a big switch. Um, and also there had some plots that I was going to do for the book seven book series when it was going to be a novel series mm. that just didn't work when it became interactive yeah. fiction. Um. So they had to go, but I have reworked some of the elements from them back into yeah. the books because I like them so much, you know. <laughs> had but to get them in there yeah. somehow. <laughs> um, but um, it, it just, I mean, it had to change completely because things like Felix and Farah and Mason Morgan became love interests. Mm. Well, and they that, weren't in the yeah. like, novel series. So that just didn't work with a lot of um, with a lot of the plots that were, were going on. I think yeah. like this, like I was going to have a book in book for each character in the novel yeah. series and that just didn't work with interactive fiction no. so i had to change the plots of these books to work um in each so yeah in a way that would work with the sort of v- variations and the branching and all yeah. of this kind of thing um douglas became a hum- much more bigger character yeah in this one because i needed um a sort of like balance against the bobby branch yeah. i know i wanted a branch there and i know i wanted the tina verda branch and things like this um, and I needed something against Bobby. And Douglas was always going to be like one of these minor characters that was mm. just there, you know. But then he started to become more an actual yeah, side and character. Started, <laughs> yeah, started fleshing him out and things like this. And I really like where I'm going to take him. I, yeah. I think people, people, I think a lot of people go on the Bobby branch, but I think people will be really surprised at what happens in the Douglas oh. branch. Uh, Everyone's scrolling through. <laughs> yeah, you're doing some more places. Um, and then <laughs> um, Rook also became a much bigger part yeah. of the the sort of overarching storyline mm. there was the overarching storyline i got going on in the interactive fiction is similar to what was in the novel series yeah but it wasn't quite as strong as it is now and i really like that i was forced to have to kind of break it down back yeah. into its parts because you've got to remember i came up with these these things when i was like a teenager yeah you know, like and a young teenager yeah as well, and i, I, I yeah. learned a lot about my own writing style what i actually like yeah and the fact that i'm like screw writing rules I'm gonna write what I want to write yeah <laughs> you know? really yeah <laughs> um so things changed a lot 
yeah oh, once I started breaking it down and I was like oh yeah no I'm gonna like you know you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do this because I want to write yeah, it yeah this like is this. how you want it yeah um and it became so much stronger for it and I'm so much happier with where it is now and where it's going and I'm right. very excited to bring that in <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely still wanted like each book to have a monster of the week kind of yeah I yeah. wanted it to feel like a tv a tv yeah. series and things like this and like that was a Buffy or a supernatural kind of yeah a, a monster of, yeah uh, a monster episode, week you yeah. know kind of thing um I really really wanted that feeling though that was something that had to that had to transfer yeah. over from one to the other that was a definite. you definitely yeah I know you definitely like those series oh yeah I really like like Stargate yeah. when I used to have like an adventure a week and it was just like you know yes yeah. <laughs> um Okay, so uh, next one. Um, Anonymous has asked, um, Hey, Mishka and Nick, um, I just recently got into Wayhaven and I just can't get enough. It's so good. Uh, but while going through some of your asks, I started to do some detective work myself. And I got to ask, just yes or no, is there anything you've told us so far that is a, that flat out isn't true? You don't have to explain any further than yes or no. It's just the hunch I have. Uh, no. I... I... I don't, the thing is, I try not to give definite answers unless <laughs> it's a definite, yeah. you know? And then, but if it's a definite answer that's going to spoil something, then I'll be really vague or just going to yeah, non-answer really cagey, because yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil things for people. I'm bad yes. enough spoiling things as it is. Like, I don't want to <laughs> do anything, you know? Um, but things do develop and change. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to yeah, put it so, down too much and then yeah, people so maybe sometimes I do give different answers especially when this book series started yeah um, I was so set on where I wanted to go but then I started writing yeah and it, it was like it leads you in a different yeah, place yeah and like <laughs> even things like I think a lot of the character if I go back and look at maybe like the asks now of when I answered yeah. about the characters back at the beginning a, a lot of them probably wouldn't yeah. apply now because I had such a definite idea how these characters were going to be over those years I developed them and then when you actually start writing them properly, you take on a life of their own and they suddenly become <laughs> so much different <laughs> than what you plan them to be. Um, so it's not that I would have, it would be like, yeah. not, the, not the truth or anything. It's just sometimes things do change. change yeah. um, and Or like story things, like I plan to put something in, but it doesn't work. Or yeah. I'm like, no, that's definitely not going to go in there. And then I decide to put it in. Like I was very um, against putting in jealousy stuff. Yeah. And that has kind of worked its way in there a little bit. Yeah. Not not into like intense levels, but it has gone in a bit. I was yeah. always like, you know. So things just do change, but I really don't want to mislead people or anything like that. Yeah. So I really do try and be vague and, and sort of like... Just be like, can't add to this one. Yeah. Bye oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, because um, I just really don't want to, Yeah, you know. So yeah, for a quick yes or no, that was... That was well, yeah. That was. <laughs> um, okay, so um, Williams Nico um, has asked, um, I don't know if this has been asked already, but how did you go about researching for your story? Uh, like all the supernatural creatures, how the agency system works, stuff like that. I love the way Haven Chronicles, by the way. You inspire me to continue writing and creating. Um, I used to write a lot, like turning dreams I've had into stories and such, but for the last past few months, I felt too drained to even care about anything. Um, thank you for doing what you do. Oh, I hope you feel better soon if you go back to creating. It's a it's a lot of brain power creating, but yeah. oh, what you can get out of it, it you really can help. Yeah, you know, drained quite quickly some days. Yeah, um, but it can it can but it, oh it can help. And so then much, sometimes yeah, you, know? you get so pumped oh, and you so come down and you're like, oh my goodness, this thing's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, so it, you know. Um, don't force yourself to do anything but you know if you feel like oh, I'm just gonna write even like I don't know half a paragraph or something yeah. you know sometimes it, you get into it and it's like yeah that was just enough to just help me feel better yeah. but anyway the question um researching yeah researching the story uh it, a lot of it kind of because it went on for so long the development uh it kind of just like it wasn't I'd go through like phases where I'd be like, I'm going to work away Haven yeah. and I'm going to like, or I'd see something and I'd be like, oh, that's so cool. But a lot of, a lot of the research to start with came from, do you remember that book we used to have? It was like an encyclopedia of like, it was like massive. Yeah, it, it was like huge. Super, I yeah. think I bought it from like, from Waterstones or something. Yeah. And I think we maybe flipped through it once and oh, yeah. then we used it. But then <laughs> I refound it like when we were young yeah and I was like oh man there was so much in there that like, there was I all remember these, it. it was all really, of these really sort cool. of like myths and legends of folklores and creatures from like all over the world and it was like this is incredible how and also, we not pay attention yeah, to this book and also things <laughs> like like how weird it was that there were so many similar mm. sort of stories how there's like dragons from like Chinese legend yeah and like oh, English totally legend and things totally like this real. and 
I like mermaids. Yeah. There's so many mermaids cultures and things like I that. I strong believe that mermaids are totally real. <laughs> and it was just, it was really interesting to me that this, and so a lot of this developed, it came from looking at these stories and thinking, oh, I want to incorporate yeah. them somehow into this because this is so amazing yeah. and more people should know about it and things like <laughs> this. And um, the agency system, that was less research and that just came from imagination no from like being employed by people oh, and mm. then being like this isn't should this isn't how it should be yeah to be employed by people i want to, to write about a, a nice you know because <laughs> again a lot of this was escape from me oh. so it's all like how you wanted it to yeah be. how i wanted it to be you know um but then i realized that they can't just be like amazingly perfect there has to be some kind of yeah flaw and thing that the, the you know the main character could maybe influence if they wanted to and things yeah. like this so again a lot of the other stuff like the caging and things like that came from trying to work out like big flaws yeah you know things that were like like you're introduced to this agency and it's like oh this is kind of good and then you're like whoa what yeah they <laughs> like, <too much. laughs> um so yeah so yeah so a lot of that but a lot of the research just came over the years from things like watching tv shows um finding these reference books yeah um being introduced to you know things that you had no idea about and things yeah. like this and um and then obviously when one thing's clicked you can go and look you can go and look yeah. it up and there's this whole world of like yeah. you know like, what did we do before the internet I yeah know. i know <laughs> there's um there's a character birdman right yeah birdman um the supernatural creature that he is comes from a very ancient civilization mm. and it, oh, it was incredible research in this thing because look nobody really knows like what the stories were so there's all these different theories that these people have yeah. and you're reading it thinking oh this is this is amazing right, we'll you can take that bit and that yeah, bit and that incorporate bit. <laughs> it. and then i want to add my own sort of yeah. feel on it as well and sort of things like this and like with the matt you said there's there was a lot of information about them and it was great yeah but um i think i liked the fact that um they were a different branch yeah so it didn't have to be exactly the yes, same yeah um so i don't have to tread on the twos of what was yeah. originally there kind of thing you know and it's sort of yeah so a lot of it just came from lots of research over the years of finding things that piqued my interest in going yeah. and having a look and then being exposed to this whole sort of you know <laughs> very cool i'll see if i can dig that book out as well i, was good it one, it? Yeah. I think it's in my, i think it's in my cupboard <laughs> um so next one um anonymous has asked um hi mishka i hope you and they are having a great day it's starting the sun is starting to come out so i'm already feeling happier i'm much of a sunshine person mishka loves the rain oh i love rain um, <laughs> Um, but I've just finished listening to your February Q&A um, and you've mentioned going on iTunes and Spotify and I was wondering if you have any plans to film an episode after the book three release uh, where you can discuss the events of book three and just gush about the romances and stuff like that. Um, I have so much fun listening to Q&As and I can only imagine how fun it would be to hear everyone's reactions to book three and your own thoughts on writing those moments and so on. Thank you guys for all the hard work. Oh, it'll be nice, isn't it? That would be a nice idea. Really nice idea. Oh, just... Plan it in my lovely planner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I you do that if people are interested. Yes. So I just have a, yeah. a full on gushy episode because I like gushy. The thing is, I write it, but I also play it. I write yeah. it to play it. Yeah. You know? So I love these moments when they come up and I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait for people to play this. <laughs> and like, you know? Definitely. We'll definitely, um, yeah, we'll definitely sort in. that out. Um, so the next one, um, Anonymous has asked, I've always asked myself if we choose the option where Bobby is our ex boyfriend. Um, did technically Bobby, back when him and the MC were dating, have any good moments at all in their relationship? Um, I was just wondering and thinking it would be good if they had at least some wholesome moments and that's why they were dating in the first place. And will we ever get um, a backstory of how it was back then with Bobby or the MC opening up about it with the chosen romance options? By the way, love your work. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Um, mm. I try and be vague about Bobby because I want to kind of leave it up to like the player to decide yeah. how they think Bobby feels with the way that Bobby is acting with yeah. them and things like this. But the thing is, I can't believe you would be with someone for a while and there not be at least some something there. You know, yeah. some good. like Bobby's like not nice. Yeah, but they're still a person. Yeah, you know. Um, so they do have can have his very small moments I yeah they, they they can they can be genuine whether whether the player decides if yeah. that was there you might get more of an insight into that if you're playing bobby's branch mm. at the end of book three. Oh, well you could take a specific branch again 
<laughs> I do that... not even remember all of this. <laughs> you got you go beyond Bobby's branch, but you, there's the other Douglas branch as well, which is really good. But if you're on Bobby's Bobby's branch and then you choose no, no, it's not you don't choose because it's not an obvious choice, which is gonna be awesome at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need to like it's another choice that leads to this branch that decides whether you go down a thing. So a and subtle it, choice that leads to an amazing yes, branch. Yeah, that we will so, know. And then, <laughs> so if you if you're on Bobby's branch for that and then you do that one, and then you go on do that. Do the one that you can't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, we're gonna have to do some investigation when this comes out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's, oh, it's really cool. I don't know. I can't wait. <laughs> well, maybe we can gush about that yeah, in the episode. It, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Um, so hopefully that answers your question a little bit. Um, so this next one has come from Kristen from Patreon. Um, she's asked, um, since our world didn't originally have supernaturals, does that mean the Echo world doesn't have humans? Or does it, or does what happen to them, sorry, or if it does, what happens to them since they are a food source? Are they like cattle or do they have their own civilization that can protect them from predators? I think I have answered this before on Tumblr, but obviously it was a while ago and it's hard to look through Tumblr all the time. Um, there are, there aren't any humans in the echo world anymore. No. Anymore. Anymore. No. Oh. Um, so um supernaturals that feed on blood and things like this can feed from other supernaturals yeah. and that's what happens in the echo world and things like yeah. this um you know sort of there are sort of like people who will like sell their blood for money or food and things like this or mm. like for you know like higher ups and things they'll have like you know people that they drink off and things like this in the echo world um but no there's not humans in in the echo world anymore mm. oh 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 okay so um Next one, um, Anonymous has asked, is there a member of Unit Bravo that you've had trouble writing? Um, not anymore, no. I mean, I've written them for so long, yeah. now, like years and years and years that, like, you know. But man, Mason Morgan at the beginning, oh, man. <laughs> Bringing Mason Morgan to life. The thing was, when I originally developed it, Mason Morgan was a, like, really hostile character. Mm. Not grumpy, full-on hostile <laughs> <laughs> really not very nice aggressive okay. and it worked okay because they were supposed to show the more animalistic side of vampires yeah but then suddenly when i turn them into a love interest for the interactive fiction mm. i'm thinking this ain't gonna work <laughs> no one's gonna want to date that <laughs> you know so i had to tone them down and they became mm. more they're slightly hostile to start with but then yeah. they just became more grumpy and sort of you know um, yeah and they had they had their moments but, yeah you know i did have to tone it down um uh, so changing their characters quite so drastically mm. i had serious trouble writing them in book one you can tell at the if you read but want to go back and be, read book one yeah at the beginning chapters of book one you can see i haven't really got a voice for me yeah. Morgan, not as solid as the other characters um they use um like gonna yeah instead of going to and then i was like no i don't like that yeah and i they, they really developed a lot during book one by the end of book one you can see they're much more solid they're solidifying yeah. into a proper i definitely have more of a, a thing and then book two i'm like yeah no i can do this now <laughs> I'm, can. I'm in there I'm, i know where i'm going with this um but adam ava and nate nat they were solid from the beginning yeah like i knew the thing is they were the original love interest in the yeah. novel series so mm -hmm. yeah and i used to write short stories with them a lot yeah. because they were that those original ones and things like this um so they were solid from the beginning really i, I knew where i was going with them and they were fine Felix Farah, oh, I, I love writing Felix Farah. They're nice and easy to write because there's a lot of the, of like me in them. Mm. Um, yes, so, there is. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I can adapt them very easily to any situation yeah. really because I kind of I have a very instinctual thing. Like even the way they speak. Yes. Even though they have a New Orleans yeah. accent and things like this, their speech pattern. I very mine often a lot. read some like Felix Farah points, and I'm like, this is like. Mishka would do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so it's sort of like, I mean, they, they're really nice and easy to write and fun. Yeah. And, and they are the, the sort of light character in amongst the sort of like but They're so serious. lovely though. They're like, I love how they can just, they feel a feeling and they feel it. Yeah. And they don't, they're and not no, ashamed they're not, to feel yeah, it. Yeah, and they're not no ashamed what to what feeling like, it is. To like show it and things yeah. like that. And writing that as a character is so freeing. Yeah. Because like, humans don't do that generally. No. We're quite guarded. Even people who were like, uh, you know outgoing people you will still guard your things but Felix Far is just like no I feel this thing I'm going to show it and be honest about it because that's how I feel yeah. and I love that it's sort of it's you know wonderful but yeah Mason Morgan oh man 
but one jeez oh, <laughs> that was a struggle but now yeah I don't have any I don't have a problem anymore I can pretty much put them in any situation yeah. like, I know how they're going to react know. yeah nice um so uh next one um so Hollaback Girl has asked um, so the werewolves thought the detective smelled like ginger and lemonade, which made me wonder, does the detective smell different to different supernaturals? Does she smell different to A, M, N, and F, and why? Uh, which also made me wonder, it's canon that Mason Morgan believes everyone is attracted to the detective. Uh, but what is that? What draws each love interest in? Um, I love this series and I'm so happy you wrote it. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have quite a lot of asks about this. Um, so yes, the, the detective does smell different to different supernaturals, as in like individuals. Yeah, you know, a um, person. In book one, you get a kind of um, hint of that when there's like a scene in it when um, they're like, where they're like, oh, is that why she smells or they smell so? And then the um, then the individual vampires will sell something like intoxicating or things yeah. like this um so you can get a sense that they smell yeah different to it. um but they do have a different the thing is this isn't unusual just for the main character mm. everyone's blood will smell different yeah to different supernaturals yeah so like my blood without the mu the mutation in it will smell different to adam ava yeah and felix farah and things like this just because you know like how humans have different tastes yes like yeah like our uh, um I don't like sweet and sour. Yeah. But mum loves sweet and sour, doesn't she? Yes. Yeah. You know? Uh, so when we smell Marmite. it... Marmite. Yeah, Marmite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when we smell it, we're like, yeah, mm, that's appealing. Or, ooh, don't like that so yeah. much. This is exactly what I don't to be yeah. everything. It's just with the main character, it's like... Like, major. Yes. You yeah. know? It's, it's an intensified thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so they will. Um, um, and with uh, Mason Morgan believing that everyone's attracted to the detective... They ju they just do. They look at the detective and think they're the most amazing person. Why wouldn't everyone be attracted? That's just how it is. That's just like <laughs> that's that's it. That's luck. Yeah, that's like, that's just how it is. <laughs> but then, like Mason Morgan, kind of is attracted to pretty much everyone. So they just assume that everyone is attracted <laughs> to everyone else. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is how I live my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and finally um so a really really good time <laughs> has asked um hi sarah and nay i have no idea what i'm doing so i hope this message reaches you both which it clearly did um i just wanted to let you know that wayhaven is the best franchise i've ever got into um and she, they also have two questions um one can vampires make more animalistic sounds like actual roars and growls um and two do unit bravo and rebecca know that i bloody love them so much <laughs> uh well, I don't know. It depends on if you show it in game, like you know. <laughs> um, I want there to be lots of moments where you can show that you love them. You know, depending on how your character yeah feels about. It. Especially Rebecca, obviously, there's a lot of up yes. and down with Rebecca yeah. and things like that. But um, I definitely now we're more in the friendships and romance and stuff. I definitely want there to be more moments that are just like even just like platonic stuff, like hugs and things yeah. like that. And just you know, if you want to like physically show yeah. that you're close to someone. I know some people. Um, don't like that so much you know like I don't like being touched as much and things like this yeah. so it, it you know it's so nice it will be a choice have all of those options in there yeah as well. so it'll be just different ways of showing it but you still show your affection even if you don't touch yeah. someone it's just you know but I definitely want to bring that in more um vampires do make actual roars and growls yeah I love that in vampires and, and supernaturals and things like yeah. that when they make proper again it's a different way of showing that they're different yeah. to humans and things like this so when it says like Oh, you know, like Eva growls at something like she does. Yeah, but, you know, um, I, Mason Morgan growl a lot. Yeah, but again, they're supposed to be more animalistic. Yes. So you know, so yes, they do. Oh, well, there we go. Um, and that I think wraps it up for March. Yeah. Where is the year going? I, know, I can't right? believe that we're at the end of March already. Um, but yes. Yeah, so um, thank you for listening and watching, and for everybody on YouTube and iTunes and Spotify, and thank you very much. Uh, Mishka's got over a thousand subscribers on YouTube Yay! now, which is amazing. <laughs> so thank you all very much. I hope you continue to love them as much as we like making them. Um, so if you are enjoying them, make sure that you like and subscribe on YouTube and subscribe on iTunes and uh, Google and things like you that. Can you subscribe on iTunes and things? Yeah, yeah. You, it's like podcasts. You can like subscribe and it, it'll download all like the episodes and stuff. Oh, no. I've yeah, stuff that's like why that. I do that. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. That, 
about wraps it up. So I hope you have a lovely April and we'll speak to you again soon. See you soon. Bye-bye.